Draw where you want the splatters to go, and there they are. No simulation necessary. All right, let's get started. So here we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.3 for this one. And first thing you should do is add in an object that you want your splatters to be on. I just made this like little wall right here. And then we can add in a curve with Shift A, add in a Bezier curve, and we can tab into edit mode, delete these points with X, and then hit T to open up this tool panel on the side and select draw and also make sure that you have up here set to surface. And if you don't see this up here, hit N to open up the side panel and go to tool and you can change it right there. This will let you draw directly onto your object that you have. So now that we have our curve, we can go over to geometry nodes up here. And with the curve still selected, we can add a new node tree. Now I wanna turn our curve into points. So we can do that with a curve to points node. And let's change this from count to length like that. So they're all a little closer now. Now I wanna turn these into an actual mesh. So we can turn it into a volume first with a points to volume and then a volume to mesh. And pretty much everything we're going to be doing in this video revolves around scattering points and then turning it into a mesh like this. So let's set this from amount to size and we can change the voxel size and the radius right here. Let's drag this out and create a value and we can plug this into the radius and the voxel size and change this to 0.1. So this will make it quite a bit smaller like this. And if you wanna smooth it out, you can um, add a subdivision surface right here and this will make it a little smoother. So obviously this isn't a splatter, it's just a line right now, so we have to do a few things. First, I think we should break this up by bringing in a delete geometry node and we can delete some of these points randomly. So let's drag this out and search for random and this will let us delete some points randomly like that. So let's set it maybe somewhere over here. Now let's take some of these points and displace them so that they're not forming like a very straight line. So we can do that with a set position node right here. And let's use a noise texture to push it around. So we can bring in a noise texture and you can plug the color directly into the offset like that and they will start to move around. But I don't like how they float away. So let's bring in a vector math node and we can set this to subtract and just subtract 0.5. That will keep it from floating away. And we can duplicate this and set it to scale. And this will allow us to change the strength like that. So this is going to make all of our points float away from our plane. You can see they're all up in the air and stuff like that. So we want to snap it back to our plane now. Um, I just have one object. If you're using a collection, you can drag in a whole collection. But I'm just going to drag in this one object like this. Now we can bring in another set position right here. And we'll use a geometry proximity node and drag the geometry into the target right here. You can leave this set to faces and we'll change this to relative. Now we can plug the position socket into our set position node. And you can see it's just going to snap back to uh, our object right here. So this looks like a bunch of droplets and to make it look more like splatters, basically what we're going to do is take all of these points, duplicate them, and then push them around just like we push them around right here. So let's bring in a duplicate elements node and we can leave this set to point. Now I'm going to turn the amount up a little higher to something like 10 and you won't really notice anything happen because all of the points that are being duplicated are just in the same spots. So we need to move them around with another set position node right here. Now we can displace them with the same noise texture that we're using over here. So I'm just going to duplicate the scale and then plug in the subtract like that so we can control the strength separately. Now we won't notice the duplicates until we alter the noise texture. So let's change this to 4D and into the W we're going to plug in an index right here. Let's plug that in. And now you'll start to see the duplicates. So let's turn this down to zero. And you can see when we turn it up slowly, all of these are going to grow like that. We can turn the duplicates up way higher. Let's turn it up to like 100. Now it's starting to look a little more like splatters. And if we look at the points right here, you can see that they're all just like floating in the air and then pushing away from each other. And then over here, they're being snapped back onto our scene before they get turned into a volume and a mesh and stuff like that. Now, if you wanna take this further, you can also change how they scale like this with another texture. So let's bring in another noise texture right here and you can plug the factor directly into the scale like that. And if you wanna change the minimum and maximum amount that they're being displaced, you can use a map range node and you just wanna change the two minimum and the two max. So we can turn the two max up a little higher. Let's turn it up to like, 
10 and we can leave this one set to zero. I'm also going to turn the detail down and let's turn the scale down quite a bit too. And I'm just going to set the from minimum to maybe 0.2 and the from max to 0.8. This will kind of just clamp it down a little bit. If you don't want to use a map range, you can use a color ramp also, and it will work pretty much the same way. So instead of the two max being 10, we can just change our color right here and set the value. You can just type in 10 like that. And you can set this one to whatever you want. Changing this from 0.2 to 0.8 is basically like changing their position like that. I have a whole video about comparing the map range and the color ramp if you want to check that out. If you want to change like the size and resolution of the splatters, you would do that over here at the points to volume. You can just make this number smaller. So you can see as I turn it down 0 0.05, the details will get more fine like that. And they're also going to look a lot more like torn apart and splattered. So you might want to also turn the points up over here. You could change it up to like 500 and then they'll create more coherent puddles. I'm going to turn this back up to point one. And if you want the splatters to not be as close to each other, you can either turn this probability up for them to be deleted like that, or you can turn this length up to like that and it will spread apart the points initially. At the very end, let's shade this smooth and we can also add a material with a set material node right here. Now let's go into render view and we can add a new material over here. I'll just call it splat and set it right there. And now we can change this to whatever color we want like that. And I'll also turn the roughness down pretty far so that it's nice and shiny. So now if you select your splatter, tab into edit mode, you can just select everything and delete it. Make sure that you have your draw tool selected and you can just draw wherever you want it to go. And what's nice about this method is if you want it to pile up like a big puddle in one spot, you can just keep scribbling right there and it will create a puddle. It actually will accumulate, which is pretty fun. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm planning on adding a tool like this to ScribbleGen at some point. And if you haven't heard of it, ScribbleGen is a tool that I'm making that lets you model things by drawing curves. And if you want the file from this video or any of my other ones, you can get those on Patreon, along with early access videos and coupon codes for free products. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.